Welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study and devotional for June 3rd, 2020. I hope that you're doing well, that you're staying safe and healthy, and that you're being productive. We, uh, we have announcements, we'll have a hymn, and then we'll have our devotional followed by the links to the adult class and the kids class videos. So let's start with announcements. Again, we want to make sure that everyone is getting our emails. So our, our health updates and, and announcements with names, those are taken care of in email. So if you're not getting our email for some reason, please let us know. Uh, we do have a public announcement about Bible class. You'll notice I say Bible class singular because this coming Sunday at 9 a.m. we will have one in-person Bible class for all ages in the auditorium. So starting this Sunday, June 7th, one Bible class for all ages, 9 a.m. in the auditorium. Um, so that's our first step at getting back towards Bible classes. We're going to watch it for a couple weeks, three, four weeks actually, uh, all of June, um, to see how it goes. But Ed's going to be teaching that class at 9 a.m. in person in the auditorium. One thing we need your help with is that the um, social distancing, the seating arrangements, skipping pews, leaving six feet, all of that will still be in place for our Bible class and... Wherever you come in and sit for Bible class, you need to sit there for worship as well. We can't have folks shifting and moving all over the auditorium. So help us out with that. If you're coming in person, stay in one place for Bible class uh, and for worship service. Don't change seats. Uh, we'd be in violation of the regulations that we're supposed to keep uh, if you do that. Now, that Bible class, that 9 a.m. Bible class will also be live streamed. So Ed's class will be live streamed, and really we're kind of doing that with uh, two different groups uh, in mind. The first group may be folks who are coming back and they've been at worship already, but they just feel comfortable being in the, in the building for an hour for worship. They don't know about two hours, given all the things that are, are going on uh, with the COVID-19. And so for those folks, know that the live stream of Bible class will conclude Around 9.30, Ed's going to find kind of a stopping point for the live stream. It's going to be um, put onto a, a, a title screen holding it until 10 a.m. for worship. And so you'll have almost 30 minutes to make it from your home to worship service. And you can continue doing what you've been doing if you just don't know about being in the building for two hours. We recognize everybody's having to make difficult decisions based on their perception, their own health, and their own standard uh, of, of being high risk or, or other underlying factors that you might have. Then also we recognize that there are some folks who are at home uh, for their own safety because they are high risk or they have folks like we do who are high risk uh, living with them. And I would like to take one moment to thank the elders uh, for their support. I know it's difficult um, but Brian and I, of course, have my dad uh, living with us, my mom too. Uh, but my dad is probably at the highest of high risk for COVID-19 right now. Uh, so the elders have been very supportive of our decision to, to worship, continue worshiping at home. Uh, we'll be in Bible class at 9 a.m. at home in the live stream. And so I appreciate how they've allowed me to do that and supported that decision uh, for the protection of my health, of my family. And you, too, might be facing that same decision for your own health or if someone else in your home, or, or maybe you just don't feel comfortable yet um, with the things that are going on in Tarrant County and Dallas County in relation to the COVID-19. Um, and so you just want to give a little bit more time. We hope that everyone uh, is using discernment, but also thinking about the end goal of being back at worship in person. We're heading towards that goal and starting Bible class is one step along that pathway. So we'll do that for July 1, all ages Bible class in the auditorium that will be available in person and live streaming. And we hope you take advantage of it. 
And just as a reminder, Bible classes have never stopped throughout all this. We have a 5 p.m. Bible study that goes on on Zoom. We also have teen time that happens on uh, Sundays, uh, also on Zoom. Uh, we have our Wednesday evening Bible study uh, uh, that, that we're doing right now. Uh, then also Carol has started his class back for new Christians. And then we have our brand new Methodist study. Bible study has never stopped at the Bridgewood Church of Christ, nor has worship. Uh, but we have learned a lot about uh, our worship, our Bible classes, and about the Bible through all of these events. So those are your decisions. If you have any questions, check the email. And then you know, feel free to call one of the elders and ask uh, about any other questions that you might have about that. But for now, let's get to our hymn and let's sing together. I be away, O Lord. If you knew that you were going to face the toughest challenge you had ever faced in life, how would you prepare for that? You know, I think that each one of us would answer that difficult question in a slightly different way. We all have our own perspective. And, and this year, especially all the challenges that we faced, maybe we'd answer that question differently today than we would have a year ago. But when we look at the text of the Bible, when we look at our curriculum for this week, Together We Grow, John 17 and 18, looking at the prayer of Jesus. When we look at Jesus, knowing the challenge that was coming at him, we know that he spent some of his final moments of freedom in prayer. And I'd like for us in our devotional thought tonight to, to reflect on that. So if you have your your Bible handy, go ahead and turn to John 17, 18. That's where we're going to be bouncing around and a few other texts as well. I, I really appreciate with this Together We Grow curriculum. I don't know if it's just happenstance or, or if it, uh, some of it was planned out, um, but like Memorial Day, right? Memorial Day weekend, when we're thinking about uh, our country and those who have served our country, those who have given their lives for our country. Um, we also had the Lord's Supper, that memorial that was started by Jesus Christ himself here at the Passover feast where Jesus has left. You'll remember as you're reading through the Gospel of John, you remember that Jesus has, has left. He's been talking with his uh, apostles, uh, and then they're heading to the Garden of Gethsemane, about a 15-minute a walk. And most historians, folks who consider these things, would put the timing at the arrival of the Garden of Gethsemane sometime between 10 and 11 o'clock at night. So here they are. They're at the Garden. John 17 that Ed covered so well for a Sunday morning in our sermon, that prayer, the longest prayer that's recorded of Jesus uh, has been, been given. And here they are at the Garden. And so eight, only 11 of the apostles went. Of course, Judas went off, right? Uh, we talked about that already. So eight of the apostles stay just outside the garden. 
And Jesus says, Peter, James, and John, you guys come with me. And it's interesting to me uh, that, that those are the same three who were with Jesus uh, when the transfiguration occurred. Matthew 13, let me look at my notes here real fast. Uh, Matthew 17, excuse me. Matthew 17 is, is uh, where you can read about that. But here's Peter, James, and John. All right? And then the Lord says to them, stay here and pray. I'm going to go a little bit further, but, but pray uh, so that you'll stay strong. Right? There's various wordings that are used for that in the gospel accounts and also in the various versions. But they are told to stay awake and to pray. But of course, we all know that as Jesus went off, he came back and he found them asleep. Not once, not twice, but three times he came back and he found those three, perhaps the closest, the inner circle, Right? The ones who were there for the transfiguration and the ones who had been asked to come further with him in the garden. We find those three, again, are asleep. But what's interesting, one thing that, that we don't probably note that often, they're in uh, Luke, Luke 22, verse 45. We're told that they were sleeping from sorrow. They knew what was coming. And we all understand that, don't we? Sometimes when life gets so heavy, so challenging, so overbearing, the only thing we can do is sleep. Other people, it has the opposite effect. When life gets so overwhelming, so challenging, they can't sleep. But I thought it was interesting. Luke twenty two forty five talks about how they were sleeping from sorrow. As we're considering prayer, we know that Jesus talked with God, his Father, in prayer at that time. All right? We look at the other times where Jesus talked to his father. Think about some of those, some of those occurrences. You know, of course, uh, when he was baptized, uh, before he fed uh, the 5,000. So many different times before um, or after John the baptizer uh, was, was killed. Uh, before he chose the 12, before he fed the multitudes, already talked about that, and before the transfiguration. Uh, I have a couple passages written down here that you might want to write down. I'll try and put them right here underneath me. Mark 1.35, Jesus prayed before daylight. Uh, Luke 5.16, Jesus prayed alone in secluded places. Uh, in the wilderness in Luke 5.16 and on a mountain in Matthew 14.23. He even prayed all night sometimes. Luke 6 verse 12. But no doubt... No doubt that he talked to God throughout the day. Throughout the day, he talked to his heavenly Father. And you think about the idea, we were talking about this the other day with the girls, the fact that Jesus left his throne with God to come to this earth. The closeness of that relationship. It's hard for us to even fathom. But left that to come to earth, knowing what would happen, to fulfill it all, and now is back at the right hand of God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 is the last verse I'd like to leave with you uh, tonight. Um, it's interesting. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, Amazon revealed um, in highlighted passages in the Kindle version of the Bible. This was the number one highlighted passage in that electronic, the Kindle version of the Bible. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Supplication, not a word we use too often. To plead humbly. So through prayer and pleading humbly. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, we all need that peace. We all need that understanding. We all need the protection of God. If you're facing challenges now, pray. And if you're not facing challenges now, know that they're coming and pray. And we can all see that our community, our country, our world is facing challenges. And so we should be busy praying. Let's pray together. 
Father, we come before you. We're thankful to be able to pray to you just as Jesus did. We're thankful for the knowledge that, that you hear our prayers and that you want to hear from us. Father, we just ask that you would be with each one of us, those who are facing uh, distinct challenges in life, some from health issues, some from relationship issues, some from job loss. We recognize all of the challenges that can come at us in life. And we recognize, too, that sometimes they seem to all come at once. And we ask that you would help us to strengthen others and that you would strengthen us. We're thankful for these opportunities to learn. We're thankful for this opportunity to pray. We ask that you would ease our burden, that you would forgive us of our wrongs, and that you would help us to be a people who look to you in prayer and through studying your word. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining us tonight. Uh, we do have um, our videos, our grown-up video. You're going to go to the Sea of Galilee, see what it's like to fish on the Sea of Galilee. Also go to Capernaum, where Jesus lived during his ministry. And during our kids' video, you're going to learn about what it's about to be fishers of men. So the two videos are somewhat connected tonight. So Sea of Galilee and, uh, and, and Capernaum and fishers of men over here for the kids. It's great to spend some time with you online studying God's Word.